terms of vaccine, we know that Singapore will be the first country in Asia that the government will roll out vaccine to people. Do you know what's the plan of the government in terms of the rollout of the vaccine? Yes, um, this is the news that everyone has been waiting for here in Singapore. I think about two, three days ago, the first batch of the Pfizer vaccine has already arrived. Uh, and as we know, is that there'll be three vaccines at least here in Singapore, the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, and then the Sinovac vaccine, right? So uh, the, the plan is to, they have built, uh, we understand an infrastructure, what we call cold storage uh, infrastructure, a cold storage chain in order to manage, um, especially the Pfizer vaccine, which, allow, which requires minus 70 degrees Celsius uh, in order to ensure the vaccine remains effective. Um, the target is to start rolling out to, to priority groups, and as far as we know, the priorities right now are the health workers, um, as well as the elderly, all right, those who are more vulnerable. And then the plan is, I think by the third quarter of next year, 2021, the, the, the goal is to have it, uh, you know, uh, vaccinated for the entire population here in Singapore. So, um, but what we are also seeing is that because of the infrastructure that Singapore has put in place, we think that Singapore is not only preparing to, to, to be just the vaccination for people here in Singapore, they are prepared to become a distribution center uh, for the perhaps even the, at least in Southeast Asia or the Asia Pacific region, uh, because the capacities are, are being ramped up right now. Um, so, so this is how we see the vaccination program and the vaccination transportation program evolving here in this country. Mr. Ambassador, uh, as we all know that uh, Singapore will be hosting the, the next World Economic Forum in May this yes. year, right? So, and that means uh, thousands of people from all over the world will be invited to Singapore. So as at, at things stand now, does the Singaporean government really intend to have all these particip uh, participants uh, uh, physically present at the, at the conference? Well, that is a, a very important question. Um, let me just start by saying that I think the approach, I believe the approach that Singapore is using now based on the confidence that they have gained mm -hmm. from managing the pandemic, it's now about, I think today we had only five cases, uh, four imported cases and one case in the community. It's uh, the first community case in, in a couple of weeks. So they are confident and so they are developed what we call a risk managed approach. That is, they look at the various risk factors. Uh, how do they weigh between uh, the pandemic, controlling pandemic, ensuring public safety, uh, health safety, at the same time to, to open the economy in order to support two goals, which is recovery and uh, preparedness and readiness for the post-COVID situation. So based on this risk management approach, they feel uh, that they are ready to host uh, the, the World Economic Forum uh, meeting uh, here in Singapore in May. Um, there will be, of course, very strict health protocols in place. How do you ensure uh, people coming in from the airport to go to the conference venue and to the, I guess, the hotel sites? Um, it may be in the same place. We don't know yet, but the, the protocols would be quite strict. Uh, but the idea is that uh, is that uh, there uh, the we understand that the Singaporean authorities are, are feel that they can manage this. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to help in the economic recovery. And it will send a strong message uh, that um, the pandemic is under control and that the economic recovery and, and the, um, the activities in the post-COVID uh, situation can take place simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is how we see things with regard to the WEF uh, that is expected uh, envisaged to be uh, held in May of 2021. So that may lead to having more travelers, having tourists into Singapore more freely as well? That is also part of the plan, but uh, it is separate from the WEF uh, situation because in the WEF, uh, it will be very controlled itinerary and controlled movements. Now, as to trying to promote um, tourism, the what uh, Singapore has been uh, doing is develop what we call travel bubbles. Uh, I think one uh, has been uh, agreed to with Hong Kong, uh, SAR, um, uh, but uh, uh, it has been suspended because of the, the spike in cases in Hong Kong. But the idea of a travel bubble is that uh, for two countries, uh, they can travel uh, without the quarantine. Uh, and, and, and as long as there are certain safeguards in place, such as frequent testing and measures of that sort. 
So, so yes, we can see Singapore probably preparing, looking at alternatives to have more tourism, but it will be with selected countries, those that I think Singapore, Singapore feels that will be safe uh, for them to open to tourists. Ambassador Surya, how has your life as a diplomat been disrupted? How do you manage to get your work done amid all these uh, restrictions? <laughs> well, we don't use the word disrupted, but shall we say uh, to be more transformed uh -huh. uh, under the new situation. Um, we basically do a lot of our work online, uh, a lot of video conferencing, um, a lot of meetings are held online. Um, and, and, but of course, you know, because of the relaxation of measures in phase two and phase three, we are able to meet our counterparts in both the Singaporean government and with the uh, diplomatic community, as well as with the private sector and academic community here in Singapore, but with very uh, uh, strict practicing of the safeguards that are in place, whether it's wearing a mask, uh, safe distancing and other measures. And of course, um, one thing that I think Singapore has been successful which I hope um, uh, you know many countries, and, and I think many countries are trying to do as well, is to have a uh, an application where most people have uh, applied to. Like for instance, the Trace Together application in Singapore, already 70% uh, of the population here in Singapore has already uh, had registered and are using it actively. So this is something I think that uh, we we should encourage um, uh, people in other countries to use the applications of that country to help in the tracing tracking and help in the fight against the pandemic.